Organized mining started in Sierra Leone in the 1920s with bauxite first recorded in 1920 along the Falaba to Waye Road. Diamonds were found in the early 1930s. From 1944 to 1956, the Sierra Leone Selection Trust SLST had the monopoly for mining, prospecting for and the marketing of diamonds throughout Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is well known for its vast endowment in minerals, which include diamonds, rutile, bauxite, gold, iron ore, limonite, platinum, chromite, coltan, tantalite, columbite, and zircon, as well as promising petroleum potentials. But the question many continue to ask is, has the country really benefited from this huge mineral deposit? If the answer is no, then what is responsible? Transparency International is one such organization that is working towards sanitizing the mining sector. And for this reason, Transparency International Australia and the BHP Foundation supported the Accountable Mining Project, which is implemented by over 20 local chapters. Transparency International Sierra Leone being one of them. But how did this come about? Lavina Bandua is Executive Director of Transparency International Sierra Leone. Actually, the Mining for Sustainable Development project um, actually started um, when TI chapters met in one of our annual members meeting, uh, which we hold as I have said annually, and where we discuss at length um, key sectors that are faced with corruption challenges in our various countries. So that year when we met at the annual members meeting, um, mining was identified as one of the key sectors that is facing most African countries, especially in West Africa, you know that most of our countries are largely endowed with mineral resources. But how those minerals are managed is a huge challenge. And we know that it's alleged that there's a lot of corruption in that sector. So we identified mining as a key sector that TI chapters need to focus on, especially those of us in Africa. Corruption in the mining sector happens mainly during awarding of contracts, licenses and leases, as due diligence in most cases is not followed coupled with lack of community participation. The Accountable Mining Project was implemented in Lonsar, Kono, Tongo, and Sayaruta. These are communities where mining has been going on for decades. Edol Kuruma is Program Manager, Transparency International Sierra Leone. He explains the approach TISL used. The global um, project uh, which has been implemented uh, by over 25 um, um, national chapters of Transparency International. Um, the focus of this particular project is to ensure that um, we improve transparency and accountability um, in the mining um, sector. Um, so the main focus of the project is to ensure that uh, we curb um, corruption in the award of mining license and contract. Um, so the project was divided into two phases. We have phase one and phase two. Um, phase one of the project um, was the, the, the survey phase. We are in, we conducted a survey to um, um, look at the processes involved in the awards of mining license and contract and then um, look at it from the anti-corruption point of view and identify corruption risk within um, these um, processes. And so um, at the end of the day, 
we put together our uh, research findings and then that ended phase one and then we move into phase two um, of the project um, that is the last two years where again we engage um, on advocacy campaign activities to ensure that the appropriate authorities take um, actions to address some of the issues um, identified um, during the survey phase of um, the project. So um, what we did as Transparency International Sierra Leone at national level um, is to work with mining communities and also at central level to work with the key players in the mining sector like the National Minerals Agency and uh, the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources and other um, key stakeholders. The Accountable Mining Project is to ensure transparency and accountability in the mining sector in which communities where these activities are taking place are crucial for a well-organized mining sector. But how do stakeholders view the Accountable Mining Project that is being implemented by Transparency International Sierra Leone? Madam Femusu Nama Sakui, Mami Kuina of Tankara Chiefdom Corner District says the Accountable Mining Project has opened their eyes as a result of the multi stakeholder dialogue forums that Transparency International Sierra Leone organized for them. We now know about Diamond Area Community Development Fund, land lease, and other issues around the mining sector, she said. Well, Nati we don't bring changes now with communities there now. Tiwe will not be done know before. We then meetings there, we don't know now. One, like the money where the mining company they give, now the chief done. Then woman they self get. Then they do to the woman there. Then they support the woman there. And likewise, the scholarship issue for Wipikin there, then they give scholarship to Wipikin there. The first thing, all that will not be ever known. But for now, we then stakeholders meeting, where then they involve we, we all don't know, say now, thing like that supposed to be now with communities there. Chiefdom Speaker of Tankoro Chiefdom, Kono District, Sabi Gondo, expressed similar sentiments of thanking Transparency International for their intervention. We didn't belong to Tankro Chisholm as a result of their mining companies that we didn't they put give we will call meetings them at all levels them they will tell them the amount we don't come and for how for utilizing amounts then they in most times like in Tankro for example we call the section chiefs the town chiefs and then they write projects present them to we uh, within their needs, their felt needs, and then different areas there. So as a result of that, we don't monitor them, we don't visit the areas them so far, and the different three sections them. So we talk of bridges, water wells, toilet facilities them. So far, so good. So we are now in the making for approve some of them projects there. Already, we don't approve some of them, and surveys don't, we don't make Baku surveys them for like construction of bridges. We don't utilize the youth them. So then they make roads them so that they will get access to the areas and they will for develop. Ibrahim A. S. Bokari is a civil society activist on Estratius. He says involvement of stakeholders to discuss issues around the mining sector is a step in the right direction as people need to know about the exploitation of their natural resources because for far too long mining activities have been going on in their communities without any benefits even to rehabilitate dog out areas has been a huge challenge most of the times we they engage the local authorities, the DTBRs, whether not from the councils where they receive the highest amount of money there, or the chief of councils where the CTC now, like uh, because CDC is a new uh, topic now the mining industry in Sierra Leone. And uh, one of the biggest tools they use are civil society organizations now the media. The second one are community meetings. The outreach sessions, what they do with community stakeholders for call, youth them, women there, and young people and for uh, sit down for let them discuss 
things that we get for do with development um, a very important now we on work because not a country we don't manage the diamond and the, the gold profits for such a long time so we approach now for we continue for engage the local authorities the young people and the women there within the majority in the community so that they see themselves as one in development all for every other person important in terms of development and uh, the moment you marginalize the larger section and the young people and the women there you they undermine development all by itself madam Omu Danema Sise is a civil society activist working for an organization called Women in Extractives in the Lower Bamara Chiefdom, Kenema District. She is pleased that community people are now considered in critical decisions on mining activities in their communities. She, however, wants more to be done. Yeah, then capacity building there, uh, it don't bring um, a good impact on the mining community because, like, first time, we not been get the, the chief don't be the benefit from the DACDF, and the chief don't be the benefit from the um, that community, um, that CDC, where we are in any year where the company in the work, if they don't do business, if we get the, the chief don't money where the chief don't back for get that money there. Before this time, we'll not be the get them. So because of then capacity building the way we be the get to an organization, don't make now the children the benefits part of them money than they through the company. And even the surface rent, before this term, it be they come, you know they come on time. But being that when I be the involved the stakeholders them, then they go and meeting them, then self when I be the involved the stakeholders and the company people then now, it they come on time. So now that's not the good impact we don't get in the community. The town chief of Bumpe village in the lower Bambara chiefdom, Kenima district, Bobson George Nabiu, says the multi-stakeholder dialogue forums that were being facilitated by Transparency International Sierra Leone helped to restore trust, as there were times when the community people had thought that they, as authorities, were colluding with the mining companies to rob them. The local authorities, especially, especially the parliament chief and the chief don't speaker with other chief don't authorities like the section chiefs, they don't they try a lot. Uh, previously, problems then be deep and then DACDF, but uh, as we speak now, I believe say, the people that don't put things in place, the parliament chief and the, you know, the chief don't cancel, then they work very hard. Like for recently, we will done, get, we will done receive 490 million loans from the government of Sierra Leone. So uh, the parliament chief in his wisdom and the chief don authorities with the, lo with the local chiefs, they we call we permit in Apanguma, a tell we say, we for good idea who people that for benefit from this money. And the idea who the parliament chief come up with to with all the local authorities, we accept that will for be like um, uh, uh, 20 rooms, guest house, and uh, with a conference hall middle, na Panguma, with that money we don't come. Because since Panguma is the headquarter town of the Lua Bamba chief we want to see that place is very good. And uh, for instance, like where NGOs and can come in, sometimes, you know, it could be kind of difficult for lodge them. But uh, when Panama chief came up with that idea that this money we don't come for big guest house, we say look at it and say yes, it's in place because it will able to help the chief down a lot in terms of lodging, in terms of any development affairs where people then can come in. So now that plan we don't take actually for let, we, let this be a benefit. We a tangible benefit where the people of this um, chief don't go see with the 490 million loans DACDF where the government we don't say recently where the Panama chief don't receive on behalf of the chief don't people, sir. Many people believe that corruption in the mining sector happens during the award of mining licenses, contracts and lease agreements. But what is the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources doing to ensure proper due diligence in the areas of beneficial ownership disclosure, awards of mining licenses and contracts? Daniel Bondo is the policy and legal advisor in the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources.
He says the ongoing review process of the Mines and Minerals Act 6 to address all the grey areas in the old Act to ensure that proper due diligence is followed in the award of contracts and mining licenses. Transparency and accountability in the mining sector is something Transparency International Australia and the BHP Foundation are very serious about. The reason they supported local chapters including Transparency International Australia Leon to roll out the accountable mining project. This initiative came about because in most developing countries including Sierra Leone, mining activities have been going on, posing environmental challenges to communities with little or no benefit to locals as it is evident that people in most of these communities continue to wallow in abject poverty. 